I thought so. Revelator Show Vault 229, The First Stone, was the game featuring my interview with Woody from Corrosion of Conformity. The full podcast features my interview with 10 years. Also, this week in Revelator History, guest and music by Film, Atticane, and Them Evils. I also cover my Guns N' Roses live experience on the podcast and the top movies at the box office. Right now, it's Woody from COC. Hey, Ryan, Woody, man. What's going on? Hey, dude. What's going on, man? How are you? Nothing, man. I'm chilling. I'm drinking a uh, I'm drinking an anchor anchor steam beer. Nice, yeah. Nice choice, man. Nice choice. Yeah, dude. I'm 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 living large out here in California. Right on, man. Well, uh, dude, I'm looking forward to you guys coming back through Nashville, man. I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, you guys were here with Clutch, uh, and I was actually backstage, yeah. and uh, we did an interview. Uh, me, uh, you, and Reed did an interview backstage a couple years ago. So uh, I would. Yeah. Yeah, I was just telling Charles. I was like, "Man, I have uh, I have uh, spoken with this gentleman, and I I remember. I totally did. I just got finished telling him that." Well, yeah, uh, we're coming to the same place, right? Marathon, uh, yeah, yeah, Marathon man. Music Hall or whatever. Oh, uh, dude, you're gonna love it. They actually redid the whole place, man. It's actually uh, it's bigger. They've added like two more bars and like a lounge area and stuff, and they've got a bar attached to the back now. Uh, they, they've redone the whole place. It's awesome. Sweet, sweet. Well, it was kind of cool before, but it'll be even better. That's that's great, man. Yeah, man, awesome. uh, I was just uh, I was just there two weeks ago for uh, for Highly Suspect played there a couple weeks ago, and I photoed their their set there, man. And th- those kids, man, those kids are rocking out, man. It was a hell of a show. Right, can kick ass, man. Cool, man. Well, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it, man. This this uh, this this Zach Wild thing. I mean, it's going to be a long as hell yeah. tour, but I mean, it's going to be fun, you know. Now, have you guys have you guys gone out with Zach before? Uh, COC has not. No, okay. no. I've, I've met him a time or two, and uh, you know we know each other, but never had the pleasure of doing any shows together. Yeah, I was curious about that when, when I saw that tour announced. I was like, man, I was like, cause, you know, Zach's been around for 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 a long time, and you guys have been around for a while. I was like, I was wondering if you guys have, you know cross paths maybe at festivals or something or. Right. No, never have. I know Pepper uh, did some uh, did some shows with him with the Down guys. Right. Uh, a few years back, but yeah, we never have, man. So I'm I'm stoked about it. It's gonna be fun. Very very cool, man. Now, I want to talk about that that tour in a moment, man. But uh, going back to to our conversation a couple of years ago in, in Nashville with Reed, we were we were kind of sitting around, you know, just kind of shooting the breeze about a wide variety of things. And and Reed shared a bunch of really awesome stories about when you guys first got signed to, to Metal Blade and all that stuff, which was awesome. But um, you mentioned, I think, at that interview at the time where you were like, you know, in in the arms of God, which was the, the last album with Pepper, that you guys right. had felt you had had discovered something as a band at that time with that album well with this new album coming out do you feel like you guys have kind of added on to that to that sound i know it was a dozen years later but did it feel like you guys just kind of picked up where you left off that well you know to, to be honest man you, you make a good point that was sort of our our thoughts whenever we started discussing doing the record we were like well man you know what do you what do you guys think you know we're like well which direction do you guys want to go and we're like well why don't we just use that as our jumping off point, you know, and see where where we head from there? And it's kind of like what we wound up doing, and it it sort of just fits it's like a it's almost like a, just a progression once again of the of the COC sound, you know. It's got a it's got elements of all the uh, all the COC that uh, people know know and uh, are familiar with, you know. But it's just new stuff, and it's like, yeah, I mean, it was like a jumping off point, especially uh, for me. I was like, well. I like that record. It's raw. It's brutal, and a lot of this record, it, it fits the same bill, you know. Well, I, I had a chance to, to, to listen to the album today in its entirety, and I really, really like it. And I think you're right on, on there as far as like picking up where you left off. I, I guess as best you can after 12 years, you know. Uh, but before we get into to that album, like, what's that call like? Because obviously there was some time there, and you guys have been with Pepper for a couple years now. You got, you know, like I said, we, you guys did the Clutch tour, and you guys have done a couple one-offs and some, you know four or five, six shows here or there and some festival stuff. What's that call like? You know, you know, obviously I think down is kind of gone their separate ways, at least for the meantime, what's that call like from, do you call pepper? Does he call you as far as, Hey man, let's, let's, uh, let's do something again. Oh, well, you know, we, we, well, ever, ever since we first, you know, started, started gigging again, I guess it was 15 or whatever. We, uh, I mean, we've actually done a lot of stuff, man. You know, uh, it's really been almost two solid years of working on stuff. And then this whole, you know, the past six months or so, we've spent working on the record. So we've, I mean, we've known the plan here ever, ever since we first got back 
uh, together and, and doing our stuff. You know, we we sort of had the game plan. You know, we knew we knew it was going to happen. It's just a matter of when and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, so we we've kind of had it planned. It's not like we're just sort of flying by the seats of our right. pants. You know, we knew we were going to make a record and. And uh, we we kind of knew what what we had to do and step up to the plate, you know. And you just, you don't want to throw something out there that people are going to be disappointed in. So we work at it, you know. We we took our time making the record, and we, we're happy with it. Well, I remember I you know, I, I bug you guys on Twitter every once in a while. I'm like, hey, I was like, hey, yo, like a year ago or six months ago, I'm like, hey, I was like, how's the record coming along? And you guys were like, it's coming, man. Like, we're, you know, we're working on it. And I, I like the fact that you guys didn't feel pressured to like, let's go out and let's let's do this and. And get it out, it, you know. And, and I love the album. There's there's some tracks on there. If you don't mind me saying some titles, um, nothing left to say. Uh, sure, little go. man. I mean, uh, forgive me. And there, there's, I don't think there's, you know, there's no filler on this album. It, it it's got a little bit of everything. It has a nice flow to it. There's some heavy tracks, and there's some, you know, the melodic tones you guys are kind of known for, like Black Sabbath type stuff, for lack of a better term, you know, is right. in there too. But um, in the press release, um, Pepper talks about uh, Wolf Named Crow, and I know you guys recently recorded a, a video. Is that the first single? No, we well, you know, it's not. We we didn't really worried about a single per se, but we did a uh, day before yesterday. We cut the video, and of course, they're still they're gonna be working on it for a couple weeks. But uh, uh, it's for the Luddite. Wow. We did a video for okay, the Luddite, right. so it's it's gonna it's pretty it's pretty badass. It's just, there was so much imagery, you know, and and Wolf Named Crow was kind of our. Or uh, maybe you know if we wind up doing another video, maybe because there's just so much imagery that kind of comes to mind, uh, really with either of those tunes, and we just uh, you know we wanted to throw something kind of brutal out there first right off yeah. the bat, you know. So the Luddite will be the video. Nice, man. Can you uh, can you uh, give us a hint of what we're going to see as far as image imagery wise in the video? Well, you know, well, there, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, we it, we we did it all on, on green nice. screen. Okay. Uh, which you know, so it, it, everything kind of comes in after the fact. But we we talked about. It. I don't want to give anything okay, away, right. but it's going to be crazy. And it, it's the same guy that uh, did the uh, uh, Rio Rio, the same guy who did the uh, Stonebreaker video. Okay. But we actually did that one down in New Orleans. But he, yeah, so he, and that that was actually a green screen video as well. But this one's going to be a lot better. Very than cool. That one, but. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. It, you know, in the arms of God is always one, was one of my favorites personally. I mean, obviously the the older stuff I love, you know, as well. You know, it's from you know Deliverance and Animosity, which uh, obviously Pepper's not on. Which, and I want to get into like the older stuff in a little bit, but um, that album I still rocked it out. My son is who's five now. Like we, I, I live in Nashville and I, I make trips back and forth to Ohio, you know, and I'll put that album in and jam it. And my son, right. you know, is in the back seat and he like he loves that album. He's like five and he's like, crank it up, Dad, turn it up. I'm like, yeah, man. I was like, we're well, which one? The the, the animosity uh, or the deliverance? Uh, well, uh, deliverance and in the arms of, in the arms of God. He, my my son who's five loves. Oh, him. in the arms of God. Okay, I got yeah, he, yeah, he's five. And he's <laughs> like, killer, he's like you know, I was like, do you like this man? He's like, yeah. And he's like, you know, out there, you know, head banging in the back seat, rocking out to it, you know. But uh, that's awesome. But, but you, is a uh, was it was it as fun as you remember recording? I mean, obviously you get twelve years apart. Obviously you guys are our friends. You know, there wasn't like this like bad breakup or anything like that that I that I'm aware of. I mean, you know, no. you guys you know, remain. No, 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 nothing always, like that. Good terms. Was it was it really cool to just kind of get back and like, hey man, let's just jam some songs. You, what was the first song that you guys put together for this album? Do you remember? Uh, well, the first song that we recorded was uh, uh, "Forgive Me." Oh, ah, okay. That 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 was one that that actually we had uh, over the course of the last couple of years we had sort of had a rough draft of it. Pepper Pepper had his ideas and stuff, and so we would kind of halfway jam it during sound checks and stuff at different gigs and so that was like the first one that we the first solid song that we sort of had for the record and so pretty much the rest of the record for the most part was kind of written off the cuff you know <laughs> that was one of the few songs that like was sort of pretty much there you know be, be, beforehand we had, we had already worked on it some and uh you know fiddled with parts of it like at sound checks like i said and stuff like that but uh yeah, forgive me for that, but it, but yeah, almost everything else was just off the cuff, flying by the seat of her pants, you know. Yeah. Now we mentioned we were obviously we were talking about the Black Label side. That tour is going to be starting here real soon. Uh, with set list writing with these new songs, is that something you guys you you take a like you know fifteen twenty songs in rehearsal and say these are the things we want to we want to potentially play set list wise and just kind of work it out as far as squeezing in new songs throughout the tour and f kind of figure out what plays to the crowd. It's, it's always tough. Yeah. Right, it's always tough when you got a new one coming out because you, 
you, there's so you know there's some at this point there's so many freaking songs you know it's like uh, but you know if, if we're doing a headline set yeah we'll we'll have like 20 songs and then we'll just pick and choose and go with which ones we want to you know do but in, in an opening slot you know there's limited time we'll probably have 45 minutes maybe 50 i'm not i haven't seen the schedule yet but you know 45 50 minutes so you know maybe we'll be able to squeeze a couple of new ones in i, I know for sure at least one and uh you know, you got to play the songs right. that people want to hear that that they know. You know, and we love playing it all, so it's cool. Uh-huh. You know, but we, you know, for for us, we want to stay fresh, and we we'd love to play more new, uh, which will, <clears throat> of course, will happen more on a, on a headline run. But uh, you know, yeah. you you, you got to play this. There, there's certain songs you got to play that people are going to be disappointed if they come see the band and they don't hear the song they want to hear. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> there's always that stuff. We we don't we don't want to be the assholes that don't play. You know, just play only like obscure shit that nobody knows. You know, half the crowd doesn't is not familiar with. We don't we don't want to do that kind Maybe of stuff. Half the but, crowd uh, after you're done. It is tough though, man. You, yeah, you, you you make a good point. Like after you've got you know ten, eleven records in them in your back pocket, you know you gotta you do it. Becomes tough to pick and choose what you want to play. You know. Well, the, the cool thing with that opening slot though, too, where you you know you're only going to get you know fifty minutes. Maybe some nights you might get sixty, but you know we're like you know what, let's just go hard and heavy for forty five, fifty minutes and just hammer out the hits and go heavy and hard and then you're off the rest of the night and go do merch table or hang out or whatever do you like that better as an opener i mean you guys have been around for a while and have done you know openers and headlines do you like being the opener though too where you can kind of you know, go do play and then you can you know you get to watch zach wild play every night too at the, at the back end of your set which is cool well, well sure sure i mean I, there there's something to be said for both both slots but yeah i mean it's it's uh Open as as long as you're you're out with a cool band like you know Zach's going to be great. It's fun, man. It's it's cool being in the opening slot. But you know I also love having you know the 90 minute set list or something too. You know and really really digging deep and going crazy with it. You know so I I enjoy both. I, we like to mix it up. I'm sure after the Zach tour we'll we'll be coming back with our our own headline dates. You know so. It's nice to mix it up. Thank you, man. I'm looking forward to you guys having a really busy 2018, man. I'm glad to see you guys back in, in the musical fold for sure. Um, and I'll let you run, man. I know you got a bunch of stuff, in, a lot of interviews and everything going on, man, so I'll let you go here in a second. But uh, when you look back, you know, and it, this may be even hard to answer, you know, given you guys' history of, of picking one memory uh, of the band, but is there anything, you know, especially right. in the early days, so I mentioned Animosity being, you know, 25 years old a couple weeks ago. Um, when you look back at, like... Oh, it's, it's older than that, man. What is that, 80... 80- Eighty-five. Oh I don't yeah, know, I guess, no, I guess it would. I, you know, I guess it would be like thirty. Yeah, I guess it would be thirty-five. Wow, yeah. Um, I think it's like thirty-two years yeah, old. Forget, forget like that, yeah, forget my math, man. Uh, but uh, but uh, you know, when you when you uh, when you look back at you know the history of the band and, and you know, meeting Pepper and all all the stuff that in between, is there a memory or certain thing that sticks out to you, whether it's on stage or touring with somebody else? Is there anything that you can that jumps out to you? Oh man, there's just so many. But you know, you talk about meeting Pepper. We knew Pepper long before he he uh, joined the band. You know, uh, uh, just just from going down to New Orleans. You know, in the early days and stuff. He was there. He was hanging. You know, he had he had his own bands down there, and uh, so we already knew each other. You know, from way back before he even came up to uh, to join the band. It was pretty. You know, and it's just like the old school stuff where you show up and everybody who's into that kind of music is going to roll out to the gigs. You know, that's just how it was back then. And uh, but you know, you talk about trying to pick something out, man. There's just so much stuff. We've been lucky enough to travel with with so many. You know, I mean, I, probably one of my fondest uh, trips from just way the way way back was a, a a little a little short tour we did with the Ramones. And I'll never forget that. You know, because I was I was always such a giant Ramones fan. You know, a little kid and all that stuff. And uh, wound up, you know, and I, I remember sitting backstage with Joey, and it was just like the it was like it was like I was living in the rock and roll high school movie yeah. you know i was sitting in a dressing room across from joey and he's like reaching in a cooler getting out of like a thing of milk or something you know and i'm like this is weird man. <laughs> that's, that's killer man <laughs> but they were the coolest dudes you know so I, I'll, I'll always look back on that as one of one of my highlights man you know getting to play with the ramones and and chilling with them but uh that's just one of dozens but yeah you know. well cool man I, um what well, do you again I, I appreciate the time and do you guys have an official release date on, on the new album yet we do, yeah. January twelfth. Oh, coming uh, up. Man. It's yeah. coming up. Yeah, I think they're going to have a official official announcement of that here in the next, uh, I don't know, a few days or something. But yeah, it's it's January twelfth. Awesome. Well, hey, Woody, again, I appreciate your time, and I've been a fan of you guys for a while, and I always 
that you guys were always great, you know, to cut some time out, whether it be, you know, having me come out to a show and photo you guys or, you know, interview or whatever. And I, and I appreciate you guys. have always been really, really cool with me, and I appreciate it, man. Well, man, we we appreciate. It. Looking forward to seeing you at the marathon here in, in a few weeks. Yeah, man. dude, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, one, you know, one thing I, I I forgot to ask you this, if you don't mind, uh, with, with new bands, do you, do you get into new bands? Is there new bands that you really enjoy listening to? Anybody that you know, I, maybe I should listen to or, or B and I have a ear for? Uh, you know, there, there, you know, things will crop up every once in a while, and and usually it's like if we wind up with somebody cool out with us on a headline day, you know, and 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 they're and so I get to see them and get to actually see what they're doing. But you know, the Mothership guys, you're yeah, probably yeah. familiar with them. They've been out a little bit. Uh, the Shrine dudes, uh, you know, and <laughs> you know, it's it's like usually it's like bands that like will come out and 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 play shows with us, and so I get to see them. That's what <laughs> that's usually what sticks in my head because I guess I'm more of a live guy than been trying to pick up CDs and stuff right. all the time but uh, yeah those, those two those two bands those are, great, those are actually two great bands we we've been fortunate enough to have them on the podcast as well man uh, and, uh yeah the, the nice. guys in the shrine man those guys are those guys shred man and and mothership too and I think you guys are going to be on I think uh this band out of uh uh, Red Fang is going to be with you guys, I think, on some shows as well. If you haven't, if you haven't heard of them, they're man, gonna they're, do, yeah, they're going to do yeah, some of the dates. Gonna, yeah, yeah, the Red Fang guys. guys uh, yeah, we've we've uh, had the had the pleasure of playing with them a couple times. They're they're from yeah. Portland, but uh, but uh, there there's a Raleigh member in the band too that we we've known for quite a while. So there's a little uh, connection there. Cool man. Wait, Woody, uh, enjoy that Anchor Steve beer, man. Uh, when you when you come to Nashville, we'll have to get a couple. Uh, I'll bring you some uh, some Dos Peros and uh, a couple locals, man. We'll we'll, we'll knock back a few. Ah, always good, man. I, I appreciate that, brother. Right. Woody, again, pleasure, man. I'll catch you. I'll catch you around the way, man. Take care. Okay, good Thanks. deal, bro. Appreciate it. <coughs> hey, kiddo.